So we're here in New York City and you have all kinds of people here who want to do all kinds of things. These two phones are kind of like that too. It's the Moto Z Droid Edition and the Moto Z Force Droid Edition. And they're not just phones. They actually can do so much more than that. I'm Phil with Android Central and this is our full review. So here we have them, the Moto Z Droid Edition and the Moto Z Force Droid Edition. And we'll be dropping all that Droid Edition stuff because it's just awkward as hell to say. But just remember that these phones are exclusive to Verizon for now and the regular Moto Z will be available unlocked in September. So let's start with the basics. Both phones have a 5.5 inch AMOLED display at a quad HD resolution. That's good stuff. The Moto Z Force has the extra shatter shield protection that should keep it from dying should you drop it. While both phones are pretty thin on their own, the Force is noticeably thicker than the Moto Z due to having a larger battery. And the Force has a higher resolution camera, 21 megapixels versus 13 megapixels in the regular Moto Z. Now under the hood, both phones are powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 processor, sport 4 gigabytes of RAM, and come in either 32 or 64 gigabyte storage options. We have the 32 gigabyte model, which leaves about 23 gigabytes for you to use wherever. Other than that, same experience. Now elsewhere on the phone, we've got a power button just below the two volume buttons, and new for Moto is a fingerprint reader. It works as well as any that we've seen on any other phone this year, but unlike other front-mounted fingerprint readers, it doesn't also serve as a home button, which has taken a little getting used to. But you can use it not just to wake the phone, but also put it back to sleep, which is a little easier than climbing all the way back up to the power button. As you've probably already heard, there's no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the Moto Z. Instead, you can either opt for Bluetooth audio or use the included USB-C adapter. Now, I use different headphones depending on where I am and what I'm doing anyway, so it hasn't been a bad transition so far, but I figure at some point I'll lose that adapter, right? As long as we're talking audio, the earpiece also serves as the phone's speaker. It's pretty loud and surprisingly clear. Not as good as stereo front-facing speakers, but it's not bad at all either. So that's the phone itself, but that's really only half the story. Let's go take a look at the Moto Mods, which really make this thing special. These optional accessories fit themselves to the back of the Moto Z with some seriously strong magnets. Not once have I had one come apart accidentally. And they're stupidly simple. The round camera housing makes placement a breeze. All you do is attach it to the phone and it's done. There's a couple seconds of software connection as the mod talks to the phone, but most of the time you won't even notice that. It just works. Once you've connected, you'll see a persistent notification that lets you know what's going on, and Moto's command center widget gives you battery info on the phone and on the mods. We've got three mods available at launch. Okay, four. The first is called a style shell, and it's a basic back for the Moto Z. In fact, one comes in the box. You can use the phone without them, but I wouldn't. For one, you'll have fingerprints everywhere, and you'll also want to protect those pins, which let the mod and phone communicate. But I've also found that the regular Moto Z at 5.9 millimeters is just too thin without one. The Force isn't as bad, but I'd still use a shell with it, and you'll have plenty of options for color and material, and they start at $14.99. Now, there are various Incipio power packs available as well. These extended battery mods add 2200 milliamp hours to the phone, and for my money, they're nearly a must buy. They double the thickness and weight of the phone, but they're ridiculously useful. There will be several models, including brands like Tumi and Kate Spade, and wireless options will be available as well. These mods start at $59 and range up to $89. Now, the next mod I'd recommend looking at is the JBL Soundboost speaker. For $79, you get a 6-watt speaker that's easier to use and carry around than just about any Bluetooth speaker. It's got an included 1,000 mAh battery, which can charge separately and will drain first before using power from your phone. The speaker is surprisingly loud, so much that I had to turn it down while on the streets of New York. And finally, there's the Moto InstaShare projector. Now, this one isn't cheap at $299, and it nearly doubles the size and weight of the phone. But it's fun! You can beam a 480p resolution onto any flat surface up to 70 inches. It's not the greatest res or contrast ratio out there, and it won't be replacing your TV for weekend movies. But it's fun! And I could very much see Road Warriors using this sort of thing for business presentations. And it's just simple to use! But talking software for a minute, the Moto Z launches with Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow, and it will absolutely be updated to Android 7.0 Nougat at some point. It's a relatively stock build, actually, with all the Moto customizations we've come to know and love over the years. And I'm not not sure if those are any reason to buy the phone anymore. Lots of phones have lots of options now, but they're still very nice to have. And because these are Droid Edition Verizon phones, they come with all the Verizon bloatware we know and don't love. Some of the preloaded apps you can uninstall completely, others can just be disabled. Let's talk cameras. Now, I've been mostly okay with either one of these phones. Do note that out of the box, they shoot at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and because of that, they don't use the full resolution. But you can change that in settings. 
In daylight, they're pretty much champs. Auto HDR maybe is a tad slow, but it works pretty well. If you're just sharing socially and aren't trying to do any real cropping or anything, it'll be just fine. Low light has been less than stellar, far less stellar at times. Now, OIS helps, sure, but the end result just isn't as good as other phones. So like previous Moto phones, we've got good cameras. Not great, but good. And we still got the wrist twist to fire up the app, which I love. So what's the Moto Z like to use in real life? Well, it's good, it's really good. It's that near perfect mix of stock Android and customizations that actually add to the experience. But that's true of a lot of phones right now. It's a very crowded field. Where the Moto Z really stands out is with these mods. They work and they work very well. Now that's not something we've been able to say with other phones that have tried this sort of thing. But the Moto Z and the Moto Z4 still live in a world where the Samsung Galaxy S7 is king. The question is whether being a droid and whether these mods is going to be reason enough to buy one. So that's the Moto Z. We've got options here, and that's kind of the whole story of this. You have two phones. One has more battery and a higher resolution camera. The other one's a little smaller. It's a little easier to carry around. They both use the same Moto mods, however, so they both have all of those options. And none of those options breaks the bank. The Styleback started about $15, and the speakers go up to $90, which actually is less than we expected that to cost. And what's more is they're going to work on future phones. They're not just going to work on these, they're going to work on the next Moto Z. That's a big deal. That gives a lot of life to this, to the Moto mods, and to Motorola in general. This is Phil with Android Central. This is the Moto Z. It's one hell of a phone. See you later. Thank you.